Hi there! Welcome to Oxford Bark Soloists Back to Bark. My name's Rosie Moon and we're in lovely Jacob Garside's living room. Hello, hiya. <laughs> um, this is my second project I've done with Oxford Bark Soloists. The first project I did was the St John Passion, uh, which we recorded and it was put together by Positive Note. It was a huge project to do. I admittedly was very sceptical when we were asked to do it, uh, just because there weren't, there weren't the singers there in the room to be sensitive to, you couldn't be flexible, um, and also you just sort of, in my opinion, or I thought that you would lose the nuances of being in the sort of moment of being on stage. Um, but actually, it was a project where lots of sort of new challenges and um, good challenges were sort of put before us, I think, as performers. For me personally, I really enjoyed being able to look at the score uh, before I did each movement, which is not the luxury you normally get. And obviously we know uh, St John Passion incredibly well, but it's, it's so uh, intricate that despite knowing it incredibly well, there are moments where, um, you know, that you sometimes forget or haven't explored before. So we also look at the score before each movement was a great luxury. Uh, and I personally really enjoyed sort of examining my sounds and adjusting my technique for the sake of recording. Uh, even normally if you're doing a recording, um, you would be in a room full of other people and be able to react, react to them. But this project, and obviously being in isolation, we couldn't have that, um, well, there just wasn't that opportunity. So it was really interesting to try and create the excitement and communication on your own <laughs> in, a, in a room. Uh, and it meant that, for me anyway, I had to be uh, really precise, uncompromisingly so actually, um, just because I knew when it was going to sort of be put together on a computer, it would, well, if it wasn't sort of very good <laughs> or really exact and... Um, uh, very precise within my own part, it would compromise the whole recording hugely, more so than if one was playing with other people. Um, There's no scope to take time, I guess, is there? No, no, there isn't. So, uh, and also in recordings, quite often, uh, you know, you you, so you can do it in bits, can't you? And mm -hmm. you know, we don't we don't have that um, opportunity. So it was really also interesting to have the opportunity to use your kind of imagination um, as to what the singers might be doing. We didn't actually know who the singers were at the start of the project. So it was a moment to be sort of quite introverted as well, just because on stage you normally sort of have to be quite extroverted just so you can communicate something to each other and to the audience. Uh, so you sort of, I think for me, I had told myself, quite a lot to account uh, and what I was doing and it was quite painful to record <laughs> as well for me because there's lots of DIY projects going on outside uh, by the neighbours. So, um, like the watermen outside today. Oh yeah, the watermen outside today. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, yes, all of this can be quite challenging to, to do from our own homes. Own homes, excuse me. <laughs> so, yeah, I've really missed Oxford Bark soloists and going up to Oxford every month. Uh, they're sort of, in a way, kind of milestones for me, um, just because it's a time to sort of reflect each month on your technique, how it's changed or how your ideas might have changed um, between each concert uh, going up there and you sort of change ideas as well when you're doing other projects. You realise new things that you learn something mm. new every day, uh, whether it be in the concert um, you know, the concert hall or in all a, actions. yeah, <laughs> all that as well. Um, so, yes, it's been a, a real time to sort of reflect a lot, I guess, on what we're not getting, what we're missing, and uh, what doing those monthly concerts with Oxford Bark really means to us. Um, I don't get to play much Bark on my own uh, as a bass player. Um, <laughs> so, uh, hence Jacob, <laughs> really kindly joining me today, um, mm -hmm. which is really great just because we can do a variety of repertoire mm -hmm. as well. Uh, we've chosen a, quite a variety of repertoire. And uh, yeah, I don't get to have the opportunity of playing solo stuff, but you do. Yeah, uh, there's so much, the, the six suites, the six cello suites, just an endless 
source of music to go off and it's like a lifetime's practice really but what, what I found really nice in lockdown is that without the time deadlines of concerts and things like that they have the luxury of just exploring it in a relaxed way and enjoying the process and it's a different kind of practice that you do when you you know when you have days on end without beats in the diary and also the, the, the three Gamba Sonatas by Bach have been re-exploring. It's hopefully I'm going to get hold of a, a five-string cello soon and I finally do it. the sixth suite on the instrument it was intended for. Mm. Um, which would be great. It would be really nice to kind of play it properly without having to conquer all of this technical stuff of going up into thumb positions all the time <laughs> and just being able to enjoy yeah, the sonority and that. So yeah, that's what I'm, that's my back to bar exploration coming up in the next few weeks. Excellent. And coming up for us, we've got Orlando Gibbons. We're gonna, our first piece we're going to play is a Fantasia, originally for two treble vials, but we've brought it down the octave for us. Yes, by Orlando Gibbons.
viols. I'm playing on essentially a viol in G, which uh, is only an octave lower than the tenor viol, which is this little creature. This little one. <laughs> it's very sweet. Um, and Jacob today is playing on a bass viol. Uh, so essentially, my bottom string uh, is the same. No, is it actually all the strings are the same as the tenor viol? Uh, my string is an octave lower than that one. <laughs> is it in tune anymore? Not, not sure. Um, <laughs> yeah, almost the same note. Scott's actually is on the same note. And then my top string is a G. And where's your G on this one? Oh, my G on this one is. Which kind of, it, this is the reason why I did, we decided to pair the Gibbons with the Bach two-part adventure that we're going to go on to play. Because they're, they're kind of, the two different versions of the way to write for two equal voices in dialogue. The Gibbons is, it like, stem from the tradition of polyphony in the Elizabethan and early Jacobean repertoire. And Bach is obviously the counterpoint of the late Baroque. Um, if you don't know much about Gibbons, he was born 1583 and died 1625, so he was born kind of 102, 102 years before Bach was. And he was also an organist. By the end of his life, he was in Westminster Abbey as the, um, the head organist there. Most of, his, most of his works are keyboard music, motets, madrigals, uh, verse anthems, and I think he wrote 30 fantasias. All for different combinations of parts. I think he goes up to six different, six parts in those. And he's widely thought of as somebody who, somebody who perfected the forms which birds give, give the roots for um, earlier on in the age. And Bach is kind of the equivalent of that for the Baroque, we see in just this huge exploration of cantatas and the way applies his mathematical mind to find mm. exactly what he, what what these pieces can be. Yeah. Um, so we should play some bar. We should play some bar. We should play some so bar. So I was back in the picture in the background so I realised how wonky it is, but <laughs> I don't think I made the situation any better by fiddling with it. <laughs> What's your idea of the string of yours? Uh, which would you like? Top one. Top one, the G. Yeah. Um, Um, number four in D minor mm -hmm. from the Inventions and some 
California Spark Law from 10 in G. I think so. Thank you. 
box of box soloists if you can. Uh, and yeah, we hope you enjoyed the concert. Maybe learned something. Uh, maybe not. <laughs> or just enjoyed. <laughs> um, I think I was laughing about. Anyway, um, thanks very much. Thank you. Bye. Bye.